Hey guys, let's get started. So in this very first video, I want to do a brief overview of some pre-physics topics you're going to need to know. So let's jump right into it. So physics is the study of natural phenomena, and I'm not going to bore you with a long definition. It's basically lots of measurements and lots of equations. I like to think of physics as math with rules. It's basically a math class with a storyline. So, for example, if you drop something, it falls. That's a rule. That's a physical rule, a physical phenomena. And there's an equation that describes that. So that's why I think of it as math with rules. Um, in physics and in any other science, we measure physical quantities. Physical quantities. And measurements have to have units for them to make sense. Okay? Now, for equations to work, these units must be consistent with one another. And I like to think of it as they have to speak the same language so that they can communicate, right? So for example, here's an equation, F equals MA. This is probably the most important equation in all of physics one, and it means that force equals mass times acceleration. We'll see it later. But for now, I'll tell you that force is measured in Newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. But this equation only works if you have these three measurements, these three quantities in those units, right? If you plug in a, a mass in grams and an acceleration meters per second square, you don't get a Newton, you get something else. This equation breaks, right? So units have to work together. They have to be consistent. And a group of units that work together form what's called a system of units. Right, so there's lots of systems of units. Um, in physics, we use the international system. Now, it's abbreviated SI instead of IS, international system. It's kind of backwards because it's in French, right? And I'm not going to try to pronounce that. You can try it. So many other conventions and standards are used in physics. We'll talk about those as we go. Let's, lo let's look into the SI unit for now. There's three basic quantities you want to measure in physics, and they are length, mass, and time. The unit we use for length is meter which is abbreviated as an M. For mass, it's kilogram, kg, and for time is second, s. Notice that um, mass is kilograms, not grams, even though gram is the base unit. In chemistry, you use grams, but in physics, we use kilograms. So we want our units to be in the international system, SI units. We want to use these units, not other units, but if you are given non-SI measurements, then you have to convert them into SI measurements before you can use them in equations, right? So I have an entire video just to talk about that, and you should watch that after this one. So equations must also be dimensionally consistent. I kind of mentioned this briefly. It means that the units on both sides of the equation have to be the same. Most professors won't worry about this. They won't do problems with this. But if yours does, I'll post a video on that as well. So there's sort of an optional video on unit analysis. But a quick example, velocity is displacement over time. Velocity is measured in meters per second. And displacement is measured in meters. And time is measured in seconds. So on the left, I have meters per second. On the right, I have meters per second. So this equation is dimensionally consistent. It has unit consistency. The units on both sides are the same. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to look into is precision, sig figs, and scientific notation. If you've taken chemistry, which most of you have by now, um, you've done lots of this. In physics, we're much less picky about that stuff, but you still need to know some level of it. Uh, measurements must be precise, obviously. Um, precision has to do with how many significant figures. I'm just going to abbreviate significant figures. Um, this is also sometimes called significant digits that a measurement has. So the more precise, the more significant digits. When you're adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting measurements, you must use significant figure rules. Now, again, some professors are going to be more picky than others. Most typically don't care about this stuff in physics. If yours does, I'm going to have a video, an optional extra video, on significant figures and their rules. So we can get a little bit more specific on that. For now, we're just doing a brief overview. Um, what else? If we're going to, there's two ways we can, well, there's several ways we can compress numbers. 
two important ones are to use the power powers of 10 or to round them. And in physics, we're usually going to round things to two decimal places. That's just another convention in physics, right? And the reason to compress numbers, you don't want to write a long ass number, right? So for example, if I have something like this, that gets really annoying to write. So I can write it as 10 times um, 10 to the power of 9 because there are nine zeros here. Okay? And we can also use what's called scientific notation. To represent numbers and it's going to take the following form a dot bc times 10 to the d that's the format for scientific notation so the idea is that before the dot you want only one number one digit after the dot you want as many as two digits two decimals and then this is your d over here is your exponent okay if you have a number that has, so notice how there's three digits here total. If you have a number that has four, five, six digits, then you're going to have to trunk it down um, by compressing, by rounding. Okay? And remember that when you round, if the digit is five or greater, you round up. If it's four or less, you round down, obviously. So I'm going to show you real quick um, some examples. You should have done this. You should have known this from before, but just to kind of refresh your memory. Um, so I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this. So for each one of these, how many sig figs does it have? And we want to rewrite them in scientific, note, scientific notation with two decimals. So let me do that real quick. This one, um, you might remember trailing zeros don't count for significant figures. So this number only has one significant figure. And if I want to write this in scientific notation, I want it to look like that. But I only have one significant figure, so I can only have one decimal. So it's going to be one times 10 to some exponent and in this case it is if I have an imaginary dot there um, which I can't add because that gives in more scientific notation that's why I said imaginary um, I would move 1 2 3 4 so 1 times 10 to the fourth and this answer has also one significant figure if you have if you start with one you can't have more than one otherwise it would gain precision in the process of rewriting and you can't do that um, here because I have a because I have a zero um, in the decimal, this counts as sig fig. So all of these numbers count except a leading zero, right? The leading zeros never count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six significant figures. But when you write your scientific notation, you only want three digits. So I'm going to do 1.00, and the rest gets rounded, which is really easy because it's just a bunch of zeros, times 10 to the, let's see, one two three four times ten to the fourth this has three significant figures notice how now this number is less precise there's less significant figures because we're rounding to conform to scientific notation so these examples are kind of annoying because it's kind of the same number over and over but i want to show you the slight differences in these so here um trailing zeros and leading zeros don't count in the integers so i have one two three four significant figures and if I want to rewrite this, I only want to use three. So here are the three that I'm going to use. I look at this fourth number, the number that kind of gets left out, the first number that gets left out, and if it's bigger than five, five or greater rather, then it would round. In this case, it doesn't cause rounding, so I just have 1.00 times 10 to the fourth. This ends up looking just like the number before it. Let's do three more. Here I have one, two, three significant figures because these numbers are decimal decimals. So the if I were to write this, I would move the period over here and I only have two numbers, two decimals. So it would be 1.0 times 10 to the 1, 2, to the negative 2 because I'm going towards the decimals. So this answer has two significant figures. Notice how in the process of doing this, it lost one significant figure. And these are sort of, those are kind of annoying, but these are sort of more realistic numbers you would see in physics without a bunch of zeros to make it tricky. So this number has one, two, three, four significant figures. These two don't count, so four significant figures. But if you want to rewrite them, we only, if you want to rewrite this number, we only care about the three decimals. So 3.80 
two, notice that the fourth one, the guy that gets left out, does not cause rounding. It stays as it is, right? Times 10 to the, get the imaginary number, move it over one, two, three, four, five. 10 to the fifth, the answer has three significant figures. I want you to try doing F, so you could either pause the video or see if you can do it real quick. And I'm gonna just keep going here. This number has one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. Again, um, zeros after decimal do count as far as significant figures are concerned. And But when I write in scientific notation, I only want the first three numbers. So I look at the first guy that gets excluded, and I say, does this guy cause five to round up? And yes, it does. So it's actually 2.36 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, times 10 to the 4th. And this number has three significant figures. Notice how it also lost precision. So that should be enough for most people. But again, if your professor is more picky about this stuff, um, I'll post a video on that. So that's it for now.